All right, in Bridge, in the photos that you downloaded, there are a couple extras. The toddler photo is the one that you are going to um, work on for color correcting. And I'm going to pop into Blackboard right now. Okay, so the toddler color adjustments. You should have one PSD of the toddler with three different adjustment layers. When you're done in your last step, downsize it to 72 like always. What that should look like is just like the example we did of that um, Scott and Danielle. So going back to Photoshop, should have saved it so I could pop it up and show you. This is the one where you're going to make three different adjustment layers. Um, the first one, and I'll add more details in Blackboard since you don't have the same book that I'm using. Um, come on, Scott and Danielle, where are you? There we go. Scott and Danielle, the three different things that you're going to do are the color balance, this one where you visually slide it out and try to fix. Then you're going to do one that is levels, but you're going to rename that one manual levels. And you're going to go into that one channel by channel. You're going to take the red channel and you're going to tweak the bright, the white point and the black point. You're going to tweak the green channel and you're going to tweak the blue channel. That's going to be that version of correcting. Then you're going to make one more adjustment layer. Also a levels, but this one you're going to call eyedropper. And using the eyedropper sampler tools in levels, you're going to sample a neutral, whatever you need to do. Use the black, neutral, and white sample points to correct this image. So when I get this from you, I should be able to turn off the eyeballs and see the original picture and then I can see how did you do color balance? How did you do the manual levels? And specifically, I'm going to look channel by channel to see that you bumped each of these. And then I'm going to check your eyedropper and see if you have an improved color correction based on using the eyedropper. So this is the PSD that you would be uploading. And then right before you do that, make sure that you change the image size it's still going to be um, the physical size that it is, but we're going to take it down to 72 dots per inch. Because resample is checked, it allows Photoshop to throw away those pixels. We went from 5.49 megs down to 500K. That's your last step, is to make it physically smaller so that you can upload it to Blackboard. And that is homework part one. Any questions on that? And it's going to be the toddler picture that's in those images. Okay. Homework piece number two is the race car. I want you to use from your downloaded pictures race car two. This is going to be the example where you use the color sampler tool. And you're going to make a sample point on a light point of gray and a sample point on a dark gray or a blacker area. So when I see this, I'll see your two sample points. You're then going to look at those numbers. You're going to add them and average them. And then channel by channel, you're going to change the input and output for red, green, blue for point one. Then you're going to go back and do it again, red, green, blue for point two. Again, if you want to rewatch the videos, I'll have them on Blackboard in just a minute. So that is how you're going to fix this picture. Okay, race car two is going to have the sample points. And then the last piece of homework is I want you to find a photo of your choice that is an animal or a human on a background. And I want you to do the puppet warp to that like we did to the elephant, meaning you're going to have to make a selection of it because the elephant was already drawn out for you. Remember, it already had the marching ants. You're going to have to duplicate or make a selection of whatever it is. Let's say you find a giraffe. 
and you're going to mask it out and put that on top of your background layer. You're going to have to go into your background layer and get rid of the giraffe. So when you start moving the giraffe, we don't see the other giraffe underneath. <laughs> and then I want you to puppet warp, have fun with whatever, okay? That's going to be a PSD also, so I can turn it off and I can see the original giraffe and I can turn on that layer and see a new giraffe. But that's whatever you want it to be, whatever image you want to do that to. Yes? Um, instead of putting a whole new blank layer on top of the background, I want you to do the method we did where you keep them on that existing background, you just fill it in where they were before with similar backgrounds. You use that content aware fill. So you're using, you'd select the giraffe again, and then you'd um, tell it to modify and be a few pixels bigger, expand. So the marching dots go beyond the giraffe. And then you say content aware fill, and it fills in, it blurs it in pretty good. You might have to clean it up a little. Okay, so that also, those videos will all exist for you to rewatch. So it's the, the toddler color correcting, it's the race car color correcting using curves and math, and then it's puppet warping the picture of your choice. Yes? Ooh, yeah, I do want that PSD. Thank you. Um, let me back up. Race car puppet warp. Oh, because I said a JPEG of the altered and a JPEG of the original. A PSD does the trick. Let's just do that. Let me edit that to just be a PSD. And again, if that's a high res file, 300 DPI or it's big, please do change it to be 72 dots per inch so it's not ginormous. Submit a dot PSD of the image. How's that? Better? Yes, other questions? No, um, I won't be judging grading based on how perfect your background is blurred out. Kind of like we did with the elephant where, where there were obvious like sand up in the sky, clean that up a little bit. But if it looks relatively good on the background, it's more about the puppet warping. So it does not have to be a perfect background where if I turned off the layer, it would look like a photograph of that empty background. We're not getting that crazy today on that topic. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns? And then just a reminder for Illustrator tomorrow, it is an open lab the whole time on your fruit project using the pen tool primarily, um, maybe the pencil and the curvature tool, but you're drawing things with those tools, not with the shape tools themselves. So your orange is not being made with an ellipse, you know, perfect ellipse. Your orange is being made with a pen tool. If you happen to have that done and uploaded into Blackboard, you don't have to come tomorrow, but I do need that color print. So I would need that today before you leave campus if you're not planning on coming tomorrow. Otherwise, it's open lab all four hours. It's due at noon, and you can make your color print out in class when you're here. But for anybody who's out of the game, make sure I get that from you today if you're not coming to work. That's for Illustrator. Yeah, sorry to confuse, but I have a lot of you <laughs> tomorrow in these exact same seats. So for Photoshop, these are your three assignments. We do meet next Monday. Fall break starts next Tuesday. What? What? <laughs> okay. Have at it. Get to work and do what you need to do. Do you want to each individual?